Hello, welcome to a lecture video that I'm calling Cellular Respiration and Fermentation Review. If you are looking for a deeper dive into cellular respiration with all the nuts and bolts and all the when, where, how, and why, I have a separate video. Um, it's called Chapter 7. It follows the Chapter 7 from the Biology and Focus textbook that's used frequently in AP Biology. If you need um, a deeper dive, that video is on this channel. I'll put a link to it in the description in case you need something in more depth. This video is going to be a short one. This is basically just reviewing um, the processes, where they happen, what molecules go in, and what molecules go out. So we do this handout in, in my class, and we always begin at the bottom by drawing a mitochondria and labeling the parts. I have one already drawn for you. So mitochondria, again, is a sort of a kidney bean-shaped organelle with uh, multiple membranes. The outer membrane is called the outer mitochondrial membrane. It's a very creative name. Um, the inner membrane is called the inner membrane. It is highly folded. Each of those folds, or the folds are called cristae. And again, having the membrane folded increases the surface area, which means whatever process is going on in the inner membrane, you're going to have more area to do it. The space between the two is called the inner membrane space. And the space in the very middle of the mitochondria is called the matrix. Understanding the, um, the parts of the mitochondria helps you understand what the mitochondria does. Okay, so let's begin at the beginning. So glycolysis happens inside the cell's cytoplasm. Right? You, don't, you do not need a specialized organelle to do glycolysis. The molecule's in. Um, in cell respiration, you usually begin with a molecule of glucose. Um, it's worth pointing out that one molecule of glucose has six carbons, and we're going to trace the carbons as we go through this. Um, one glucose produces two pyruvates, or two pyruvic acid molecules. Pyruvic acid is a three-carbon molecule, so the fact that you make two of them means my six carbons are still accounted for. Glycolysis also produces some ATP. In my class, I don't worry too much about how many of each molecule is produced. For one glucose, you do make two ATP, in case you might have a teacher or professor who, who cares about counting molecules. Of course, if you make ATP, it means you required ADP, right, and some inorganic phosphate. I'm going to notate inorganic phosphate as a P with a subscript I. Um, that represents inorganic phosphates, which are just commonly located in the cytoplasm of a cell. Glycolysis also produces some NADH. I'm not worried about how many. And to make NADH, you need to have the oxidized form, which is NAD+. All right, that is NAD+, which is the oxidized form of NADH, which is the reduced form of NAD+. All right. So note, I haven't made any carbon dioxide yet because my carbons are all still accounted for. All right, so the intermediate step, every year, I this is one that I, I always forget where it happens. It just doesn't stick in my memory. So I have on the handout to remind myself that it happens in the mitochondrial matrix. So those two pyruvate that you made in the previous step go into the intermediate step, and they come out as acetyl-CoA. A-C-E-T-Y-L-coenzyme A. Pyruvates have three carbons. Acetyl-CoAs have two carbons. So you lost a carbon, which means you produced carbon dioxide. Again, I don't worry too much about how many of each molecule there are, but just to throw it out there, if one glucose makes two pyruvates, then from one glucose you'd have two acetyl-coenzyme A's and two carbon dioxides. This step also produces some NADH, which means you required the reduced form, or rather the oxidized form, NAD+. Remember, NADH is an electron shuttle, which is going to carry those high-energy electrons to the electron transport chain in a later step. The Krebs cycle happens inside the mitochondrial matrix. Again, this is just a review video. We're not going to go through all the steps of the Krebs cycle. Going into the Krebs cycle are your acetyl coenzyme A's. And the carbons of acetyl-CoA are going to come out as carbon dioxide. The Krebs cycle does produce some ATP, which means you need ADP plus your inorganic phosphate. 
and the carboxyl alkyl produces some more NAD H and its cousin FAD H2, which is another electron shuttle. And of course, if you make those, it means you need the oxidized form NAD plus, and the oxidized form of FAD H2 is just FAD, FAD. All right. Now, the whole point of making the NAD and FAD was to take them to the electron transport chain, which happens inside the inner mitochondrial membrane. All right. And there's electron shuttles NAD H and FAD H2 are going to come bring their electrons to the membrane. And when they put them in the membrane, you're going to pop out the oxidized form, NAD plus and FAD, which can then go back to the Krebs cycle or glycolysis or the intermediate step in the case of NAD plus to pick up some more electrons. All right. Now, the whole point of the, of the electron transport chain is to produce lots of ATP, which means I also need ADP in my inorganic phosphate. And the final acceptor of those electrons out of the membrane is oxygen gas, which is why you need to breathe. The membrane, uh, or the oxygen gas, takes the electrons out of the membrane and uses it to form water, which is why when you write out the respiration formula, um, one of the products is water. Okay, now that's done. All right, my last row here, glycolysis with fermentation, this is sort of like an add on. This is again happening in the cytoplasm. And I want to make an important distinction. You got to be careful what you're talking about. So you learn in school that fermentation is a way of producing ATP when you don't have oxygen, which that's great. You still have to do glycolysis first. All right. Glycolysis still happens. Fermentation is sort of like an add on. All right. So are you talking about fermentation by itself? Or are you talking about the whole process, glycolysis with fermentation? I have it labeled here as both processes, just so that we're clear. Just make sure that when you're talking about this, you, you know what you're talking about. So glycolysis with fermentation, you're going to start with glycolysis. So you're going to have glucose. All right, glucose goes in, and you're going to make some ATP. If you make some ATP, you're going to need some ADP and some inorganic phosphate. Right now, with glycolysis, you know you make pyruvate. Well, what do you do with the pyruvate? Does, does the cell just accumulate pyruvate? That isn't going to be a good idea. The fermentation part is to take the pyruvate and turn it into something, and you either turn it into lactic acid, or I'm going to put a slash next to that, or alcohol. Usually, it's in uh, the form of ethanol. Okay, now this is an important distinction. Let's count the carbons. Glucose has six carbons. Lactic acid has three carbons. So when glucose got turned to pyruvate, which has three carbons, that gets turned to lactic acid, which also has three carbons. You haven't lost any carbons. So do you make carbon dioxide when you do lactic acid fermentation? No, you do not. All right. Alcohol, and usually the case of ethanol is what you're producing. Ethanol is a two carbon molecule. So if you're producing alcohol, if you're producing ethanol, you're also giving off CO2, which is why I'm putting CO2 in parentheses next to alcohol. When, when you're making bread and you have yeast and the yeast gives off CO2 to make the bread rise, that's alcoholic fermentation. All right, so does fermentation produce carbon dioxide? You got to know what kind you're talking about. Are you talking about lactic acid or are you talking about alcoholic fermentation? Now, the last thing I want to add, and because in terms of, of net, what comes in and out, we're done. But one of the main reasons why we need to do fermentation is to regenerate NAD+. Plus. So in parentheses over here, I'm going to write NAD+. Plus, and you know that glycolysis needs NAD+. Plus, okay? And it produces NADH. Now, if that's where I end... If you run out of NAD+, plus, if all your NAD+, plus gets turned into NAD H, you can't do glycolysis anymore. So this is all that you're doing when you accumulate NAD H, you're done, right? I can't do more glycolysis. So regenerating the NAD+, plus is one thing that fermentation does. 
And I'm going to put in parentheses, again, I'm running out of room here, NAD plus, because we need to point out that one of the functions of fermentation is to spit the NAD plus back out at you. So this NAD plus can go back into glycolysis. All right. NAD, I don't really need to write the NAD plus because it's in both. But a common test question or a common concept that you need to understand is that fermentation regenerates the NAD plus that goes back into, into glycolysis so that process can keep going. So it does give me some ATP, glycolysis with fermentation. But equally, or maybe even more importantly, we'll say equally importantly, is it regenerates the NAD plus that goes into glycolysis. Okay? All right. I hope that was helpful, and I will see you guys next time.